and the top of them was cut at the angle that I found using the speed square earlier. I also cut down one long piece for the bottom plate and one long piece for the top plate, but that top plate needed to get an angle as well. I set the blade on the table saw to 35 degrees, that was the same angle that I found earlier. Then I cut an angle all the way down this top plate. It'll be obvious in just a minute, but the reason this angle is there is so that you have a full flat wall with no angle at the top. This will make it a lot easier to put on drywall once this wall's in place. Along the bottom plate I marked every 16 inches and then centered each one of these studs on that mark. I nailed these in with a framing nailer, but a hammer would work just fine. And you can see on this last one what happens when you don't have enough air pressure. After that, I put the top plate against the angled part of the studs and drove in nails from there. I knew that I wouldn't have any trouble getting this wall up the stairs because it was pretty small, but if you have a bigger wall like that, you're probably going to want to make it in the room that it's going in. I got this thing slid into place and made sure that it was plumb, and then just hammered in some nails down into the floor and up into the rafters above. Now since I'm cutting out a section of the wall, I have to reinforce the stuff that's sitting on top of that wall, which is currently the rafters. And to do that, I'm going to put in a header. Now I'm going to make a header out of two 2x6s two sandwiched together, but that doesn't quite become thick enough. So we're also going to cut a piece of half inch plywood to put right down the middle, glue all three of those pieces together, and drive in screws from both sides. That'll make a really solid beam to put in place and carry the load of the rafters above. All right, so I've got the power cut off because it's time to take out these studs and there are electrical wires running through them. So I've cut the power off to the circuits that I know are here, but I also want to double check with this thing. This will tell you whether electricity is running through a wire. As long as that doesn't turn red, you're good. Basically all I'm doing here with the electrical is unscrewing everything, pulling the switch and a plug down two studs and then putting it all right back where it was. It's nothing difficult, it just had to be moved. This video is sponsored by Energizer, and they gave me that Vision HD Plus Focus headlamp that I'm using, and it was a huge help on this project. With the electricity turned off, I didn't have to worry about trying to manage a flashlight. I had both my hands free, and I could put the light exactly where I needed it. It was really handy. In fact, I kept it on even after the electricity got turned back on. It's a very handy thing to have around. I keep one in my shop. I keep one in my vehicle. Go check them out. I have a link down in the description if you want to find out more. So this pipe right here is actually a vacuum system that's built into our house. We don't really use it very often, especially up in this part of the house, so I'm gonna cut it off and cap it right below this line. After that was capped off, I went to the outside of the wall and took off the trim. That was nailed through the drywall into the bottom plate of the wall, so it had to come off before I could take that bottom plate out. And all of the vertical studs on that wall were sitting on top of that bottom plate. So I used a multi-tool to make a cut at each end of my new opening, and then used a pry bar and a hammer to lift that piece out of place. Two wires were coming up out of the floor and went through that bottom plate. So I had to undo them from the receptacles to pull them back through that hole. And even after that, they were still coming up out of the floor in the wrong place. I had to cut out a section of this pine planking so that I could move them down one stud. So there were two wires that came up out of the floor here and they were actually coming right into where we're going to put the opening so I had to reroute those. Unfortunately that means I had to tear up some of the planks that were down here covering all the joists 
And so I'm gonna have to go back and patch that. But now I gotta drill some holes to reroute those wires up into this section and then put everything back to where it was. After that I got all the electrical wired back up and then cleaned up the rest of the opening where my new header was going to go. I also cleaned up the outside edges where the jack studs were going to sit to make sure that they would go right into the place where I needed them when the time came. Then it was time to put in the header. Now this was a really tight fit, which is a very good thing. You definitely want it to fit well, it's pretty important. It was kind of hard to knock in and I ended up getting out the big 5 pound sledge to get it in there. After I got it pushed all the way up and flush with the outside of the studs, then I laid in my jack studs. These get knocked right into place underneath the header to support it. Then I drove in some nails to tie them into the studs behind them. <coughs> Done for today. So I didn't show all of this work, but I did have to move some electrical around and it's all over out of the opening now. Also had to move an air conditioning vent. I ended up having to move that up to where you can't really even see it, but it still goes into the other room. But we're gonna leave the grate where it was to keep a little bit of airflow into this room, into that to kind of equalize the temperature a little bit. So I've got the rest of the insulation up. This gap right here is gonna be our access door to get into the rest of the attic in case we need it. So made some good progress. All right, so the plan has changed just a little bit, but I think it's actually gonna be for the better. Originally, this was gonna be a really separate room from the closet, and I was gonna put up a wall right here in between with a door, but now I think it makes more sense to just leave the whole thing as one big space. Of course, we still do have to have some attic access there, and I've got that figured out, but that means we have to build another one of these knee walls to extend this all the way across. So we're gonna do that, and then work on the access to get into the attic. So now we've got to make a little frame to go around where the attic access is going to be. And you could use 1x6s for this, but I actually don't have any on hand. I do, however, have a scrap of old 1x12, so I'm just going to rip it down to the right sizes. <laughs> 